From advertising to software as a service to data. Across all of our programs and clients, we've seen a 55 to 65 percent open rate. Getting brands authentically integrated into content performs better than TV advertising. Typical lifespan of an article is about 24 to 36 hours. If we're reaching out to the right person with the right message and a clear call to action, then it's just a matter of timing. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast, and I hear everything production. In this podcast, you'll hear the stories of world-class marketers that use technology to drive business results and achieve career success. We'll unearth the real-world experiences of some of the brightest minds in the marketing and technology space so you can learn the tools, tips, and tricks they've learned along the way. Now here's the host of the MarTech Podcast, Benjamin Shapiro. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast. I'm your host, Benjamin Shapiro, and today we're going to discuss different forms of communication in marketing. Joining us is Dimitris Maniatis, who is the CEO of Upstream, which is a global specialist in mobile marketing automation with 20 years of experience. Upstream's mobile marketing automation platform combines innovations in marketing automation and data security from online advertising fraud and multi-channel digital communication aimed at creating personalized experiences for end consumers. Yesterday, Demetrius and I talked about what is RCS messaging and is it necessary for marketers? And today we're going to continue the conversation talking about the advantages of cookie-less mobile marketing. All right, here's the second part of my conversation with Demetrius Maniatis, the CEO of Upstream. Demetrius, welcome back to the MarTech Podcast. Great to be back, Ben. You know, it took me 24 hours, but I'm starting to actually pronounce your last name correctly. I'm excited you're back on the show, Mr. Maniatis. I'm extremely excited you're pronouncing my name right and to be back on the show. It's like a hazard of the job here as a podcast host of names that you're not super familiar with. What is your heritage? What's your nationality? Are you Greek? Is that Maniatis? So I am Greek. I live in Greece right now. I'm in London for work. But yeah, I'm 100% Greek. And generally, I struggle with Greek pronunciations most of the time because there are so many syllables in the Greek name. But it's a new day. I've got your name down, Maniatis. And we get to continue our conversation from yesterday. We were talking about RCS messaging and sort of this new way where you can deliver richer experiences through what we consider to be text messaging. And it's sort of part of this underlying trend of the combination of the world continuing to go mobile. So our mobile efforts are continuing to be more important for marketers, but also we're seeing this just general shift in our ability to accept, use, catalog, make sense of data. So talk to me about some of the advantages of what's happening with mobile data. We're going cookie-less. What are the advantages of cookie-less mobile marketing? I think there are plenty. One advantage is when you're forced to abandon cookies, you actually do something as a brand, as an advertiser, that you were probably supposed to be doing all along, but maybe the world gave you options that allowed you to be lazy, which means you own your own customer's data. And you're able to communicate with your own customers directly without going through third parties like Google and Facebook and paying a fee every time you want to talk to your customers to those platforms. So I think that's a huge advantage. It doesn't come easy because it requires marketers to kind of change mindset, learn that there is another way. It was always kind of a requirement to own the relationship with your customers It's just that Google and Facebook made it so easy for everybody. The path of least resistance led everybody to not really focus on investing into building their own customer databases, their own CRMs, and make an effort to collect with consent customer data so that they can communicate with their own customers on their own. It sounds so simple when you say it that way. If you're building a business and you want to have relationships with customers, you should collect your own customer information so you can communicate with said customers to try to drive them to buy your products or services. Okay, that seems like table stakes, but the reality is that we've basically had the ability to run arbitrage businesses as marketers for the last 10 years. The beginning of my career was in e-commerce. I worked at eBay. And we think of eBay. Okay, buyers go on this platform and they 
find customers and sell. But there's all sorts of other businesses around eBay where there was affiliates and drop shipping businesses, not necessarily people that were the actual creators of a product that are selling it on the platform. And I think we're seeing similar things in sort of the digital ecosystem now that we saw in e-commerce 10 years ago. Right. If we start to see an opportunity to do something more efficient with customer communications, we can actually take advantage and monetize it. It used to be I see that products are cheaper on Amazon than what they're listed on eBay. So I'm just going to buy something and send it to someone on Amazon if they complete an eBay transaction. That's drop shipping. Now we're starting to see essentially that was the model in digital commerce for the last 10, 15 years. I don't actually have to own the relationship with the customer. I can just be a marketer that's great at getting someone from Facebook into a product or services, and I don't actually have to collect the data myself. Yeah, sure. It makes sense for marketers to want to own access to first party data. But it also begs the question of how do you go find the people that are interested in your content and service, mostly in a mobile world, when you can't just go out and rent access to them from a platform? So sure, we're forced to go get first party data, but getting first party data is challenging. How do you advise marketers to start thinking about actually marketing and collecting that first party data when they don't have the underlying access to it in the first place? I think you pose a great question. And the way you opened it up, I made a note of the word efficiency. So it was the most efficient way to go through Google and Facebook for that service. And marketers who take advantage of that early will win. It very soon will not be the most efficient option because already we see Facebook campaigns, for example, not being as effective due to cookie abolishing tactics or tracking abolishing tactics of Apple, for example, on iOS or Safari. And what's going to be coming up on Android devices and Google Chrome as a browser in the future. So it no longer will be the most efficient way. That's not to say that people will stop advertising on Google and Facebook. So the first time you will try to get new customers when you want to appear where people search for a product or a service like yours, that's still there. Discovery, for example, will still remain with Instagram, with TikTok, with a number of platforms. And then a lot of the media campaigns you're going to be running, they're still going to be there. What's changing is what happens, what you do with the people that actually respond to those campaigns and land on your website. So when they land on your own asset, be it your website, your app, that's the point that changes. That's the point where you need to develop tactics and strategies to collect first-party data from those people. Ask them their phone number. Every website has a, probably at the footer or a pop-up that says, hey, give us your email and you'll get 10% off on your first purchase. I think that works very well for a while. The only problem is that emails have a 20% open rate. Messages have close to 100% open rate. So simply switch from collecting just email and add, give me your mobile phone number as well and opt them in immediately. Waste no time. Send them a text message that says, hey, thank you for opting in. If you want to opt out, here's a link. You need to be privacy conscious about it, but it needs to be done. I hear what you're saying in the sense that collecting contact information from your prospects once you're able to market to them becomes increasingly important in a world where third-party data access is restricted. The flip side of the coin is somebody comes to my website and I want them to have this wonderful experience. And if I'm now asking them for email and phone number, the more you lengthen a form, the lower the conversion rate is, right? If I'm saying, hey, Welcome to my, let's say, e-commerce digital store. Before we get started with you browsing products, which is what you're here for, let me ask you 15 things about yourself. You're going to lose customers. So how do you balance in a mobile world where you are paying more to get access to your prospects, the need to collect more information, and what the impact of collecting that information is on your actual conversion rates? First off, you don't have to do that. You can find clever tactics of getting that data during the checkout process. When somebody completes a transaction, you usually used to be relying and making a requirement for the email. I think you should be making a requirement for the mobile phone number, at least that. So that's kind of an easy first step. Other clever tactics is you allow the person to browse. 
And there's instances in their browsing behavior like they're about to exit your website. So you know about the exit intent pop-ups that happen sometimes. So through there, for example, you'd say, hey, don't go. You were going to drop off the funnel anyway, but don't go. Give us your phone number. Give us your email and we'll give you a coupon or we'll make it worth your while. So there's a number of tactics people can do. I'm not suggesting lengthening the funnel. That being said, I think people should be mindful and conscious of the fact that by not collecting those data, it means every time they want to talk to the same person again, they would have to go through Google and Facebook. Now, I'm not saying it's one or the other, but minimizing or maximizing the most you could do through your own means is the sensible thing here. Talk to me about the differences when you think about collecting that first party data and the user experience. How is it different from mobile as opposed to a desktop based experience? It's not hugely different, I would say. It's still people giving their information willingly, be it on their mobile device or be it on the desktop device. The mobile device has some advantages over that through technology that exists today. With the consent of the user, identification of somebody's mobile phone number can happen without the user going through typing the whole 10, 15 digits. So it can happen. There is technology that exists today with the consent of the user. Hey, you don't have to type it. We can detect it for you from the mobile carrier already. For example, that could be different. And increasingly, we see a lot of applications of that technology, but it's not widely different on the customer experience. You still need to go through the steps that you need to go through. So here's my takeaway from this conversation. We are on a slow moving train. Access to third party data is being restricted. It's going to be prohibitively expensive to rely on the traditional marketing platforms that we've used to get access to our customers and continue to market to them through those platforms. The Facebooks and the Googles and the TikToks and the Snaps and all these other platforms, even programmatic advertising, is going to get more expensive over time. So if you're going to invest in your performance marketing to find your customers, you're going to need to do a better job of finding ways to extract first party data from those leads so you can continue to market to those customers and raise your LTV. Now, the big question here when we think about what's happening with this trend is, how do we do that? Do we focus on desktop experiences? The world is going more mobile. And I think that there's some distinct advantages in mobile when we're looking at a cookie-less world because there's so many more ways for us to get that autofill, capture information, to streamline the process. There's uses of technology to be able to expedite and simplify the process of customers giving you the information you need in a privacy-centric way without you having to ask them to tap, 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 fill out every long standard form that we need. So maybe there are advantages in mobile marketing that help us get over the lack of third-party data. And that wraps up this episode of the MarTech Podcast. Thanks for listening to my conversation with Demetrius Maniatis, the CEO of Upstream. If you'd like to get in touch with Demetrius, you can find a link to his LinkedIn profile in our show notes. You can contact him on Twitter where his handle is dmaniatis, that's D-M-A-N-I-A-T-I-S, or you can visit his company's website, which is upstreamsystems.com. The Upstream team has a white paper that specifically talks about mobile identity. So if you're interested in learning more about their take on mobile marketing and how it's impacted by the cookie future, upstreamsystems.com. Just one more link in our show notes I'd like to tell you about. If you didn't have a chance to take notes while you were listening to this podcast, head over to martechpod.com where we have summaries of all of our episodes and contact information for our guests. You can subscribe to our weekly newsletter and you can even send us your topic suggestions or your marketing questions, which we'll answer live on our show. Of course, you can always reach out on social media. Our handle is martechpod, M-A-R-T-E-C-H-P-O-D on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Or you can contact me directly. My handle is benjshap, B-E-N-J-S-H-A-P. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you want a daily stream of marketing and technology knowledge in your podcast feed, we're going to publish an episode every day this year. So hit the subscribe button in your podcast app and we'll be back in your feed tomorrow morning. All right, that's it for today. But until next time, my advice is to just focus on keeping your customers happy.